Oh, hello, this is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, feel free to write to me at walkwithtak.gmail.com if you have any question regarding to this video or any videos that I have posted in the past. If you have any videos that you would like me to make, uh, please let me know. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. A home cooking becomes a lot of fun when you are able to explore and try different possibilities. Use ingredients that you normally find it familiar and use it only for one thing, but now you have find other way to use it. In today's video, it's a good example of how to make use of spaghetti pasta noodles. Now, spaghetti pasta noodles can be used in many different capacities in addition to use in a spaghetti dish. And recently, a viewer Sally wrote to me uh, she told me that uh, you can treat spaghetti noodles uh, with baking soda while you are boiling it. Now she said that when you do this, what happens is that the spaghetti noodle will become softer in texture. In a way, not that like you boil it for a long time, but it will be soft texture. It will be a little bit more elastic, and this makes them more like ramen noodles. So I decided I'm going to give it a try. I boil. Two pounds of uh, pasta noodles in my uh, 14 inch cuisine art stainless steel wok. And the best thing about this wok is that it is great for boiling noodles because the size of the wok is perfect for 12 inch pasta noodles. So the end result is that you don't have to bend the noodles or you don't have to break them, you just drop them right into the wok. And since stainless steel will not rust, so you don't have to worry about it rusting after you boil water in it. And my friend Paddy loved a fried pasta noodles. In fact, fried pasta noodles is one of her favorite dish. So I decided I'm going to give it a try, because uh, this pasta noodle has been treated with uh, baking soda. Might actually turn out to be really nice. And so what I did is that uh, I store the pasta noodles that I have boiled for about 48 hours. And storing the pasta noodles turned out to be really important when you want to fry them. Because if you don't store them for this amount of time, the noodles will be very wet. So when you try to fry it, what happens is that it will stick to the bottom of the wok. So uh, storing them tends to dry them out. It's very much like you store rice before you use it in fried rice. A couple of things uh, is very important when you fry noodles, I discover. Of course, uh, one of the most important things is that you want to make sure your wok has a non-stick cooked surface. Uh, for the stainless steel wok, which I'm using right here, which is very easy to do. All I need to do is to use my spot seasoning method uh, to season the wok. Now, if you have a carbon steel, you can do the same thing. And the spot seasoning is very quick. It only takes about uh, 15 to 20 seconds. Now, once the wok has been well seasoned, uh, you notice that uh, I do not put in a whole lot of oil. All I need to do is to put in enough oil that will allow me to coat the surface of the noodles. Now, I start out with a small amount of oil because I can always add more because you do not want to have too much oil because that will make the noodles too oily. And the goal is that once you start to coat the noodles with oil, you should notice that the oil is well spread out on the surface of the noodles. You do not want to have extra oil sitting at the bottom of the wok. When that happens, you know you probably have too much oil. Now, another thing is really important when you fry noodles is the heat management. Now, I start out uh, with the, the burner turned at the highest heat setting. But once I got the noodles started to uh, fry, I turn the heat to a medium or even medium low. Now, I use a uh, glass top uh, electric range. Now, if you use a gas, uh, you probably uh, you need to adjust the heat slightly differently. The goal is that you want to fry the noodle slowly. In many ways, uh, you are actually trying to brown the noodles. And if you have the heat too high, uh, the noodle at the bottom will get burned. Now, as you notice that, I continue to uh, move the noodle around. But you don't really have to do that all the time. In fact, uh, at some point, you want the noodle just sit on the surface of the wall and let it start to uh, brown. And this is exactly what I did. After I coat the noodle surface with the oil, I just let it sit for a while. And you want to keep an eye on it. And then you notice that after I sit it for about uh, maybe two or three minutes, I use my wok spatula. Now you should notice by this time that if your noodles start to get 
burn, like it turned darker, then you know your heat is too high. And uh, if it's only browning it, you know your heat is just right. And still you notice that uh, this method works really well. And the key is that is to keep a uh, keen watchful eye. And in fact, one of the best things about home cooking I try to explain to people uh, is to continue uh, to pay attention to what you're doing. And one thing about stir frying is that you do need to pay attention to what you're doing all the time because things happen so quickly. And perhaps the most important consideration in stir frying is heat management. As you notice that I uh, now flip the noodle over, uh, you notice uh, that part of the noodles uh, start to uh, brown. And this browning actually is what's going to make the noodle taste great. It gives the noodles a slight bit of a crispy texture. At this point, you can actually grab a couple pieces of noodles and give it a try and see how the crispy texture affect their flavor and uh, how this crispy texture um, provide you with that culinary experience that you are looking for. We all love food that are crispy. And as you can see in here, um, there are not everything is turned crispy because you want part of the noodle remain to be soft. It is the combination between the softness part of the noodle versus the part of the noodle that has been fried and become crispy. It is the contrast between the two that make this pan fried noodle truly delicious. As Patty told me that uh, she become very good at it. She know exactly uh, how much frying she want. And I'm sure different people will have different preference. Now at this point, uh, I'm going to season the noodles with some aromatics. First of all, I'm going to uh, add some scallion, which I have chopped. Again, I already have that in my advanced prepping, so which is very easy to do. And next is that I'm going to add some garlic. I add the garlic way at the end because I want the garlic flavor uh, to be strong, uh, to be uh, able to provide me that garlic experience. Now again, uh, if you don't like garlic, you can skip it, or you like the garlic flavor more permeated through the noodles, then you can add it earlier. So there's a lot of uh, uh, leeways of how you cook this dish. And this is what's the beauty of home cooking, because you can make so much adjustment. And this is why uh, in my fast cooking system, I have that four components, which is flavor chasing, advanced prepping, stir fry, and tempeh based cooking. All of these components are designed in such a way that will allow you uh, to make fine tuning of um, the dish that you cook. And it is this fine adjustment that will lead to ultimately what I would call flavor chasing, the flavor that you're going to love and enjoy. I'm going to garnish the noodle slightly with oyster sauce, but this is completely uh, optional. Now you can eat the noodle just the way as it is. However, quite often what I would do is that I will cook another dish that will go on top of the noodles. Now, this truly is a way of what I call combinatorial cooking. You cook one part of the dish uh, in a different way, versus you cook another part of the dish, and then you combine them together. Now, for this particular instance, uh, I'm cooking a stir-fry dish, which I contain um, salmon and shrimp, and I also uh, have some vegetables, which include broccoli, uh, some uh, colored bell pepper, and some mushroom. And this allow me now combine the two dishes together. And when I eat it, I will discover that I have the flavor from both uh, the dish that cook separately. Now in here, uh, the sauce of the stir fry dish will permeate it into the noodles. It will make the noodles um, taste much more salient and uh, more interesting. Again, um, the ingredients that you use uh, can be vary. This is the foundation of tempeh based cooking. What I show you here is basically uh, two different template combined together. The first template is the pan fry noodles. And the second template is a stir fry dish, uh, in this case with salmon, shrimp, mushroom, and uh, broccoli. All of this, when it put together, it provides a, a unique combination. Now, when you use tempeh-based cooking, you never have to worry about uh, 
getting bored because you can always make fine adjustments、uh, how you either cook the dish, how you season the dish. Now, in this case, of course, I use this pan fry noodles, but you can easily see that instead of using this pan fry pasta noodles,、uh, you can use it just a、uh, regular noodles, and in mixing them together,、uh, you will create a lo mein. This is a different version of what I've shown you here. So the end result is that you have lots of flexibilities. So my goal is that to help you to make home cooking as part of your daily routine by demonstrate to you how to use the fast cooking system. That with the four different attributes of the cooking system, it will make home cooking、uh, to you that is practical, efficient, creative, and fun. So you will net. Never get bored and tired of cooking, and you will be able to cook the dish exactly how you like it. And this is what going to make home cooking sustainable. So, if you want to learn more about this fast cooking system, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. So keep on cooking, and I will see you tomorrow.